Welcome to Arizona Gardening with Robin Sherry. Before we get started, please take the time to subscribe, then click on the bell icon to get notified of our future videos. Hey everyone, this is Rob from Arizona Gardening, and I want to talk about having pests, uh, rodents or pests in your garden. And I have a confession to make. I had a problem with rodents getting into my garden and uh, also uh, aphids. Now, the answer to the question is why did I have this problem, especially with the rodents, is whose fault was it? It was mine. <laughs> totally mine. It didn't really hit me until I watched a few videos and I was starting to fight this problem. One is this was my problem. Is I thought since we fed the, the hummingbirds and all that kind of stuff, it'd be kind of neat to put a bird feeder out. And it's away from the house. If you turn in here, you can see I'm away from the house. And I didn't think anything of it. The problem with bird feeders is when the birds get in here and they start kicking stuff, we usually get a, lots of uh, quail in here. And they fall to the ground and, and the quail would work it. But what you didn't see at nighttime is I was creating a food source for rodents. So as you can see along the fence lines, we have openings. And I imagine some little field rat came along and said, oh, free food. <laughs> And started finding food here. The other problem I was having is I keep the bird seed, sorry about the sun, over near the porch in this area right here. And we have a sauna which we never use. Don't buy a house with a sauna in Arizona. Arizona is a sauna so just keep that in mind. <laughs> and I used to keep the bird food right here and uh, I always noticed that some little birds would come up here and put a hole in it and and they knew where the, the source was. Turns out it wasn't necessarily the birds that were putting the holes in it. Turns out that because I attracted some rodents, they found my sauna here, and it has an opening at the bottom, and guess who started living underneath my sauna? A couple of those little field rats. And uh, I've never had trouble with rodents before. No mice. I don't have problems with any of the critters down here in Arizona till now. And it turns out they get in the bag and they were feeding and luckily my cat was noticing at nighttime that uh, uh, something was creeping and crawling out here so it was late at night I actually sat out here with, at the door and watched and I finally witnessed what was going on and uh, I created a food source for rodents. Well, in turn, those rodents also discovered my garden. So, uh, if you look closely, I've had to set up my trap. I have to be careful with with our own pets. But I put a, a, a trap down here, and I've been running them back here. And uh, I hate doing that, but uh, it was my own fault. But uh, they were getting into my gardens down here. And uh, I noticed I have some beautiful little strawberries coming. And then they disappear the next day. And in fact, I had a trap right here, behind here, and caught one of the rodents. And that rodent was carrying one of my strawberries. So, yeah, it was not good. And I was also complaining, if you watch the other videos, that my uh, broccoli down here was getting nibbled on in the back. Turns out it was the rodents. And uh, so... Uh, of course, the other problem I've been dealing with is aphids. And that was my own fault, too, because I bought uh, little seedlings one, yeah, that um, uh, from a nursery, and I must have had aphids on it, and of course it spread. And so I had to start doing research of how to deal with that. So now I do a combination of a water soap, washing my plants off to get rid of the aphids I have, <clears throat> And now I'm spraying every two weeks with a homemade solution of water, um, garlic water, about a cup of garlic water with real garlic, 
tobacco. I had to go buy chewing tobacco. I don't use chewing tobacco. Boil that up, about a cup's worth of that. And then I added uh, Listerine antiseptic to it. And it's a homemade re recipe from a guy named Jerry that does videos. And uh, spray my entire area to make my garden distasteful to the, the, the uh, pests. And so uh, now I'm reaping the, um, the benefits of it. I notice I don't have any trouble with my broccoli anymore. Uh, and I think I'm going to recover from all this. Um, so as you can see, I get the lighting a little better. Sorry about the shadow. Broccoli's coming up just fine. Starting to get strawberries. <laughs> and now staying. Um, this stuff is kind of long term. This is uh, dill. Those are, uh, that's garlic. That's some uh, onions I have uh, planted. It'll take a while for them to ripen. And I'm still trying to get my tomatoes back on uh, going here, but they are producing tomatoes. But the frost was definitely hard on them. And uh, but they're coming along, actually. You can see that I'm actually got some tomatoes coming, but my plants, the plants still look kind of sad. And I have added a couple of new ones in here. If you look a little closer, you see I put a new plant in here, and there's some back here. And uh, right in here, and they're doing just fine. The other thing is uh, the frost, I told you last time, wiped out my uh, cucumbers. I've replanted my my uh, cucumbers. And now you can see they're all coming up just fine. These are all the, small, uh, the smaller cucumbers. They're coming up just fine. And uh, I also noticed I was starting to have trouble with aphids. In this garden too and so I showed a little bit on my beet sprayed those with uh, soap and water uh, hit all this my poor little I still got a little bit of a problem in here with uh, spinach where I'm getting it's still having a little trouble with the aphids <coughs> but uh, uh, it's going away and that's using a combination of soap and water and the other thing is I'll show you let me go over the fence here is the beans are doing really good all them beans and uh, <coughs> everything's starting to look a little bit better but uh, <laughs> uh, the aphids are definitely were playing havoc over here and I think we caught them in time with soap and water and uh, treat the plants a few more times and uh, that should take care of the problem. So once again, ask yourself, when you're doing a garden, whether you're in Arizona or not, the things that you don't want, which is pests and rodents, are you the person, are you the culprit? Or do you have another problem? Maybe it's a neighbor or something, but the problem here was me. I made the mistake don't have a bird feeder um, all you're doing is it's nice to feed the birds unfortunately the bird seed is attracting other critters too and that if you're going to have a garden I don't recommend that you do a bird feeder I, I haven't had any trouble with uh, with uh, hummingbird feeders however in Arizona I have a hummingbird feeder you also have to be careful where the from <laughs> the nectar that comes out of them is sugar and here we have to deal with sugar ants and that's a big attractor so I always make sure I keep crystals down here to keep the sugar ants away from the drippings from the hummingbird feeder so for every cause and effect <laughs> I was the cause of my problem and once I realized that I'm now pro proactively doing things with my garden that will restore it and keep critters out in the future. So I hope that was helpful to you. Ask yourself, am I protecting my garden? Am I doing things that, like if you have a pile of wood or anything like that where critters could live, you're creating the circumstances. Uh, I bet you nine times out of ten the problems you have with rodents uh, are probably your own fault and it's easy to fix so I hope that was useful to you so I'm Rob Scribner 
guys have a great day and a happy gardening. Talk to you later. Bye. Thank you for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over. Then go down to the description and think about becoming a member of our Patreon. This will allow you to get special content just for you and help us build future content. Thank you.